Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Now let's consider this conversation between Ali The one that is holding the microphone And Rohan The one that is receiving question Now let's listen or let's read this conversation Ali asks How do you make delicious curry puff every time? Then Burhan answered, Oh, I follow the standards of making good curry puffs. Notice the word standard here. And then he continued by asking, What are the standards that you follow? And then Burhan said, Oh, in order to make good curry puffs, number one, you need to measure the right amount of flour. Number two, you need to leave the dough for one hour before you actually mold it. Now, this conversation highlighted the usage of the word standards. Probably, we have used the word standards before. What is standard? So, according to dictionary, com, it is a rule or principle that is used as a basis for judgment. Meaning to say that there are requirements to actually label something okay for example uh, what is the standard to become a cfs student oh a student must pass at least five subjects so meaning to say that it's like a condition or a characteristic to label something now this is referring to also standards for critical thinking so combine that meaning of standards and apply it to critical thinking here uh, in order your argument to be considered as critical thinking, you need to follow certain standards or requirement. When you have this requirement, when you apply it to your arguments, then you can consider your argument to be of critical in nature. So let's look at the standards or requirement that you can apply to make your arguments more convincing. So what are the standards of critical thinking? The first one is clarity, precision, accuracy relevance, consistency, logical correctness, completeness, and fairness. The first one, clarity. Clarity comes from the word clear. So, when you argue, your argument should be understandable. Clarity is like a light bulb. Associated with a light bulb, as a light bulb, when it is switched on, it brings light that makes the room clear. Same goes to clarity, it makes your argument clear. There are two forms of clarity. The first one is clarity of language. Second one is clarity of thought. Clarity of language is using appropriate level of words in an argument and being direct to the point. There are two elements here about clarity of language which are appropriate level of words and direct to the point. Appropriate level of words refers to when you argue, you want to know the audience. So if the audience is a five-year-old kid, for example, so your choice of words should, should suit with the level of understanding of the audience. If you are dealing or talking with university graduates, for example, then you might want to use certain words that is a bit slightly difficult as compared to how you actually speak with five-year-old kid. Now, the second one is being direct to the point. You don't go around the bush. You just deliver what you actually intend to say. Let's look at the example here. Now, minus clarity of language refers to you are not applying clarity of language. See here, it is essentially crucial to master and unite sufficient manpower to bring forth a development to a country. Now, when you apply creative of language, see the difference here. It is important to focus on human capital development to improve our country. Now, the, the one that is below is much more direct to the point and the language is more appropriate to at least SPM level student. Notice essentially crucial is redundant. You don't need to use these two words here. You can just use one word that is important. Although not exactly the same meaning, but at least this is much more clearer. It makes the argument easily understandable. So this is what it means by clarity of language. The second one is clarity of thought. Clarity of thought refers to showing a clear mindset when uh, you argue. A critical thinker knows what he say and shows that he knows what he say. Now, let's look at an example whereby uh, clarity of thought is not applied here. Look here. I 
more or less think that we should have more restaurants in CFS. Now you see here, the word more or less somehow delivers the point that this person who is arguing here is not really sure or not having a, a stable or strong stand about his opinion. So this shows a lack of clarity of thought. Now when you apply clarity of thought, the argument will become like this. I believe that we should have more restaurants in CFS. So this shows that this arguer actually believe and have a strong expression that uh, CFS should have more restaurants. So this is considered as having clarity of thought, knowing what you see. Now the second standard is precision. Precision comes from the word precise or being specific. So argument should contain details. Argument should contain details or be specific. Now what is like using a magnifying glass where it shows you the details about something. So when you argue you want to show enough detail so that it is clear and have enough information. Look at the example here. Solution must be done to cater the problem of the country. There's a lot of problem here because it doesn't contain a lot of details for you to actually argue. Now look here. Solution. What, what kind of solution are you talking about here? Okay. And to the problem of the country. Another word is the problem. What problem or which problem are you referring to? And which country that you or you think that has the problem here. So you are right. You, there's a lot of missing information here that almost you cannot do anything about this. Okay. So let's apply precision and it becomes more or less like this. We must train more historians. So this refers to the solution that we are talking about to solve the lack of cultural, cultural awareness. To solve the lack of cultural awareness. This one refers to the problem. And then which country? Malaysia. So the second one here, the one that is applied precision here, includes enough detail for us to think about. So this is what it means by applying precision. Now the third standard is accuracy. Accuracy means that when you argue, your arguments should be based on reliable and timely sources like this uh, this is just uh, taken from the uia logo but what i want to highlight here is the quran basically you may relate it with the quran it being uh, why the quran because quran is the most reliable source and it is uh, uh, relevant across time so it will not be, be outdated so reliable here means it can be trusted and timely here means it, uh, it's not outdated so it's updated, it can always be used currently. Now let's look at the example, the one that is not applying accuracy here. According to a soothsayer, when sneezing, we emit a ghost-like entity to infect others. A uh, soothsayer is a type of fortune teller. So now let's look at here, accuracy. This person is arguing that sneezing will emit a ghost-like entity to infect others. So it's very scary there. And this argument is based on the source of soothsayer. And we know uh, that sneezing is a biological process. If sneezing is a biological process, you want to refer to an expert about biological process. So who is an expert of a biological process? You can see that according to a doctor. So you would want to consult a doctor to talk about sneezing. Alright, so let's look at this argument here that is applied accuracy. According to a doctor, when sneezing, we spread viruses that can infect other people. So if you can see here, by using a reliable source, which is a doctor, it will strengthen your arguments to make it more believable or more critical in nature. Now the fourth standard is relevance. Arguments should be relating to the main issue. The key here is relating, like a chain connect between the argument and the issue. Let's look at an example here. Minus relevant. Musmizah cannot be a, the leader because she is wearing spectacles. 
Now, so you know that no, is definitely by the fact that he's wearing, she's wearing spectacle does not determine or is not a relevant reason to prove that she cannot be a good leader. So here, uh, when you apply relevance and see here, Musmiza cannot be the leader because she is hated by all the members of the society. Oh, so all it sounds too heavy, right? Okay, let's change it to most. Okay. So let's see again, Musibiba cannot be a leader because she is hated by most of the members in the society. So as you can see here, the reason that she is hated among the members of the society is more relevant to justify that she cannot be a leader as compared to wearing spectacles is not really relevant. So make sure that your argument must be relevant uh, or a reason must be relevant to the issue that you are discussing.